friends, and welcome to The World Transformed. All this week, we're talking about AI and related technologies. My name is Phil Bowermaster, and with me in the virtual studio is my co-host, Stephen Gordon. Hello, Stephen. Hey, Phil. How are you? Well, I am super fantastic. Happy Tuesday. How are you, my friend? Man, I'm, I'm ready to race. We just got to figure out All which right, race yeah. we're running, right? Okay. Well, let's, you know, in order to win a race... You really need to know which race you're in. And I thought this would be an interesting way to kick off a week of talking about artificial intelligence would be to put it in context. And it's one of the three great technological, at least three, right? But one of at least three great technological races that are taking place right now. And in fact, I got the idea for this show from some comments that I believe Christine Peterson put up on Facebook the other day, and I just can't find them. So if I'm attributing them incorrectly to Christine, I hope someone will let me know who it was that actually said this. But she was talking about Elon Musk and the amount of development power and capital and energy that he has put into getting us into space. And she said, you know, wouldn't it be great if he was doing all that on anti-aging instead, if he was working on reversing aging rather than rather than moving us into space, since aging is uh, also a crucial problem, and for each of us individually, a more urgent problem than getting into space. And I thought, well, that's interesting. Let's compare these three races and see if we agree with Christine on that, or if we think that maybe space is more important, or, or do we think that AI is the most important of the three races? But I listed those three. I don't know, Stephen, a space race, race against aging, the AI race. What do you think? Is that a pretty good trifecta of races? I'm fascinated by the connections between the races. There are some interesting connections, both in the people who are pursuing them and in what they might have to do with each other. Well, we've talked a little about how the nature of our technological races have changed over the years, that at one time in space, it was nation states, actually it was the superpowers that were racing right. against each other. It, not even to, it, to even call it nation states is in, inaccurate. The West is a nation state, but they were also, it was kind of, also kind of in the role of the whole West, right? And the Soviet Union kind of in the role of the rest of the world, right? It's kind of racing, yeah. racing against each other. Um, the whole communist bloc, the whole Eastern bloc there. And now it's nation states racing against private entities. And interestingly, the private entities seem to be moving right along there, moving along very nicely, kind of getting the upper hand in some, in some instances. If you look at the race against aging, now that one's taking place mostly in the private sector, I would say, right? There's no, oh, yeah. there's no national government anywhere in the world that said we're taking this on up to this point that I can think of. No, no Apollo program for uh, aging people, unfortunately. So uh, Keep an eye on Japan. If anybody does, right? They would be a good candidate because because they have a rapidly aging population, as as Thomas Rowe yeah, was talking yeah. about on the show a couple of weeks. And ago. they also they, and they also have they're highly technologically developed too. So you think, well, uh, they've got they've got the means and they've got the motive. I don't care who wins this race as long as we can all enjoy the benefits. I don't know if I feel that way about the other two. But the race against aging, as long as the benefits are equally distributed, I really don't care who wins. I, I'm not sure in the case of space or AI that there's any way that they can be distributed appropriately. If the, it is kind of a clash of world powers, almost like the old superpower race, where you've got one side, China, has thrown the gauntlet down, right, and said, we're going to be the leader. And they're investing in it in a big way. The leader in the race right now is the U.S., and we have done it primarily through private development. I mean, we've got some military activity around it, and there's some government-funded research in the universities, but mostly our big leap in artificial intelligence has been through Google and Amazon and some of these, some of these other com- companies who have just really taken a big lead with it. Hard right. to say if that, if that model is going to hold true, right? Will it continue to be a race between businesses on the U.S. side and governments on the other side, or this is a good piece. AI is the new space race. Here's what the biggest countries are doing. I thought the breakdown in that piece was pretty good just in terms of you think of the U.S. and you think of China, but you don't think necessarily of the U.K. as being a player in this space, but they've got some stuff going on. The European right. Union is doing, is doing some AI research. Germany is. France is in there. Canada. So there's a lot more players, and even Russia shows up, which is ironic, isn't it, that one of the leaders in the old space race is now kind of an also-ran in the artificial intelligence race, but maybe not one you want to completely rule out, right? Because 
Right. Putin has given some pretty clear language that he wants to move ahead with that. If I were going to bet between Russia and China, I would put my money on China, though. Absolutely. Between those two, it's, it's China for sure, it would seem. If I were going to put my money on anybody, I'd put it on the publicly traded company. <laughs> but, you know, it's hard to say who's going to ultimately get the upper hand in this. The United States, our approach to it, is primarily let the private sector do it because they can monetize it. And, and because they can monetize it, it's sort of a virtuous cycle. They, they have a advance and they monetize it, and they, and make, which makes them richer, which makes them more able to advance, et cetera, et cetera. And around right. and around that goes, whereas you make a government program of it, you just throw capital at it with uh, monetization being just something that comes around much later. It got us to the moon. So don't want to completely discount that as a, as a strategy for, you know, for accomplishing big things quickly. But it seems like in the long run, uh, the self-sustaining methodology of using the private sector may, may get us further. I think it's probably the best approach for the U.S. The, the yeah. one thing I would point out is that China – has proved up to this point to be pretty good at sinking investment, government-level investment in things and getting a return out of it. They might be better at that than we are in the West. They seem to consistently have, at least lately, the world's biggest computer, for example, the most powerful computers. So that's another arms race. It's kind of, it seems to go back and forth, but lately it seems like China has taken the lead on that. Let's say we clear the board down to the two real players. And I'm just going to say, here's, here are the two actual players, okay? The two actual players are China and Google, right? right. <laughs> that's, that's actually yeah. who's yeah. competing for, for dominance in AI. And you've got one player who has stated outright that they're going for global dominance, and that's China. And you've got right. the other player who has not said that, but subtly that's what they have obviously been trying to do in everything that they do. For them, dominance means something different from what it means to China. So, I mean, there's... There's a little bit of an apples to oranges comparison here. I've got to go with I've got to go with Google. That there's something more organic about the way they've been working with Google or some company that Google acquires, right? Put it that way. We'll say right. Google plus the whole American slash Western AI development space. Yeah, the whole Google sphere, you know, the the alphabet uh, super or whatever. <laughs> the the, the Google have. sphere, exactly. So I'm hoping that it's an open solution that shows up, that it's one that belongs more or less to the world. Even if it's China who gets there, I hope that, that that's the way it looks. But we've talked quite a bit about the other two races, so I thought it was important to maybe just lay a little bit of who's playing and, and, and what the race is. But the real question we wanted to get to, and with a few minutes left here, we'll have to get to it pretty quickly, which race is the most important? Which one should we be following? Which is the one, Stephen, say you had a billion dollars, right, that you could put towards some critical human achievement, and you decided you were going to invest in one of these three races, which of the three would you put your billion dollars into? Okay, okay. The reason Elon Musk is doing the SpaceX thing is because he's, in part, because he's scared to death of AI. It feels like uh, we potentially are summoning the demon, and we need to be on another planet as well in case we do something to cause our own extinction with an AI event of some sort. And then the, the race against aging, we've had from way back a, a blogger that went by reason, and he's still writing at, what, what's the name of his blog? Called Fight Aging. His argument all these years has been, we do that first because it buys us time to do everything else. And years ago, Phil, you asked me if you could have one superpower, what would it be? And uh, super intelligence is what I said, because when you get super intelligence, you get everything else. If we get some sort of super AI, wouldn't that help us with the space race and the anti-aging race and everything else? I think you're right. And I don't like that. I'm personally not pleased with that. If I look at it from more of a my family, my community, my nation, my world standpoint, if we don't, if we, the U.S., don't win the AI race, then we might get wiped out economically by whoever does win. Also, right. if the wrong AI kicks in per Elon Musk's fear, that, that could be the end of the world, right? So maybe that's more right. important even than my survival. Sad to say, because that's everybody's survival, which, you know, by the old Vulcan formula is more important. Now, the thing is, though, if we were going to conquer aging anyway, how would we do it? I think you make a great point. The smarter you are, the smarter you are at everything. If we have artificial intelligence, we're going to, we're going to be better at fighting aging than we are without the artificial intelligence. And in fact, if we have artificial intelligence and we introduce it correctly, we'll be better at managing artificial intelligence 
also, which is kind of the weirdly ironic part about it. It's like we almost have to push on with AI because that's the best way to protect ourselves from AI, strangely enough. There's no endeavor, there is no field of human endeavor that artificial intelligence isn't going to give us a boost in, is there? It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to help us in every single one of these races. And maybe my suggestion is when you come down to it, there's really only one race. It's the AI race. We've got to get that right. If we get that wrong, it's the end of humanity. And I don't think uh, getting to Mars would help that. I think uh, some little outpost on Mars is going to save humanity. If, if, if we can get to Mars, they can get to Mars, sadly. Yeah. We've got to get a handle on AI, and we've got to use it to our benefit. The major benefit might actually be saving ourselves from AI, which is this odd, paradoxical-sounding thing, but I actually think that's true. Then we get the aging. Then we get the space race. Then we get all the other stuff, post-scarcity, end of disease, all the other stuff we've talked about. It all is enabled and empowered and accelerated by artificial intelligence. And there's no other technology I don't think you can say that about. It's Pandora's box. It's the, yeah. it's the thing out of which everything else arrives, right? There are other uh, technologies you could compare to it, going all the way back to you know, the beginning of writing or even back to language. Um, right. You know, the, the arrival of language, the arrival of writing. Well, I'll tell you what, Stephen, I'm going to ask you to hold that thought because we're going to touch yep. on that on our, on our Friday show. Having established that AI is the biggie, when we get to Friday, we're going to talk about, well, just how big is it going to be? But between now and then, on Wednesday, we're going to take a look at some common myths about artificial intelligence, or are they? So we're going to clear our, some of our thinking about AI and see if some of these ideas that we have about artificial intelligence are quite in line. And then come Friday, we'll talk about how big is it actually going to be. Well, that was great, Stephen. I feel like we, we wrapped up that which of the three races in record time. <laughs> I guess it's just because you agreed with me, so it, it made it faster. <laughs> it's always better. Just to, just agree with him and nod you know, and back away. <laughs> agree with Phil, and the show will get over in record time. That's, right. that's, all, you, that's all you have to do. Exactly. Okay, we will be back tomorrow with a new show talking about myths around AI, and then on Friday we're going to wrap up this week with our third and final AI show talking about the scope of artificial intelligence. Great having you all with us. And until next time, live to see it.